A lot of people just cannot handle direct conflict nowadays. And it's not even because you want conflict, it's just that if there's some kind of negotiation that needs to be involved, you want to negotiate and you're willing to stand up for yourself. And sometimes people see that directness that you have as a form of aggression. And it's almost like they see your assertiveness as something to be feared. And you know, it's the weird thing about fear and respect, something that I've learned over the past few years. It's kind of weird being feared sometimes. I'm not necessarily always been used to it. I haven't always been feared in my past because I was often a doormat. I didn't really know how to assert myself in the situation because when you assert yourself in situations and you assert who you are, you're way less likely to get used because you're actually being authentic and you're going after what it is that you want and what you need in the situation, whether it's things or whether it's from other people. And so one thing I've noticed is like how, how weird people can act when all of a sudden you're somebody that you're actually being responsible, you're actually being disciplined. And it's almost as if your discipline turns into their terror, okay? Now, what do I mean by this? We're going to go into uh, the Proverbs today. We did a Bible study just a little bit earlier in the Regal Change Academy, and we were reading through the Proverbs, and I want to reiterate this because there's a lot to be said here and a lot to be had about this topic. So this is Proverbs uh, 1, 26 through 29, and it says, I will also laugh at your calamity, and I will mock when you fear cometh when your fear cometh and when your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind when distress and anguish come upon you then shall they call upon me but i will not answer they shall seek me early but they shall not find me for they that hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the lord they would none of my counsel they despise all my repoof so that's actually through verse 30 there, but the reproof there, they despised the rebuke. That's what a reproof is, right? They despised it. A lot of the times people that think that you are calling them out, like they're being called out, right? You, you are willing to be calling people out and it's because you're disciplined. It's because you're competent. It's because you know exactly what you've had to go through to get to this point. And so when you try to go back and you try to show up again, they're going to act a little bit different. They're going to try to exclude you or isolate you, whatever the case may be. And that's fine, you know, but you have to rec recognize that the most high is going to laugh at their calamity and mock them when their fear comes. Do you understand what I'm saying? So a lot of the times we get stuck on seeing the wicked seemingly thrive. And this has been something that I myself have gone through in the past as well. Like, why is it the case that all these liars and, and cheaters and even some of the murderers that I've seen, like they're murderers of the spirit, not necessarily murderers of the physical body, but they're murderers of the spirit. How come these people look like they are just enjoying their life? They're just enjoying everything. It's like, well, you have to understand that their time has not yet come, but their time is short. And the Most High is going to laugh at them when all of a sudden they they start to fear because they've already made their decisions. They've made their decisions and they don't want to change. But you've made it very clear that now you're a potential threat to their way of life, to their way of sin, because of your righteousness. And it's these kinds of things that are going to allow you to really demonstrate to them that your discipline is their terror. It is their terror because you're, you're on point. You're doing everything you're supposed to. You're abiding in the truth. You're not just say, speaking the truth. You're abiding in it. And now you're to a point to where you can laugh at them. And it's not because you want to see other people 
fail, you want to see other people fall. It's like, <laughs> you tried to tell them, you, you tried to tell them, man. And your discipline, your results are now showing something completely different. And here's the thing, you may not even need to have all of the material goods or the material wealth or whatever of the, of the world. But if you just know who you are, you have a grasp of who you are, you may not have everything in the world, but you have yourself. That is, self-mastery is far more important than anything else. I think there's a quote, I don't remember who it's by. It might be in the art of, you know, it's not in the art of war, but there's a quote somewhere that says something like, um, maybe it's Jordan Peterson, to master a city is more difficult or is easier than to master yourself. So to master a city is easier than to master yourself. Why? Because you don't have to look outside. You have to look inside. And a lot of people don't even know what that means. A lot of people have no idea what it means to actually look inside. To, because a lot of the times when people hear look inside, something in their soul resonates. They're like, oh, yeah. Oh, that sounds nice. That sounds great. Yeah. Yeah, look inside yourself. Oh, well. No. It's not all sunshine rainbows and like, oh, empower yourself. That's not what it is. Sometimes you need to look at the darkest parts of you and look and see, wow, yeah, that's a, that's a beast right there. That's a beast and that's a part of me. And I don't know if I need to tame that or not. Sometimes in the past where I had a dark part of myself come out, you know, in Jungian psychology, there's a lot of discussion of there, there are four to five main archetypes of the psyche that make up the psyche. That is the persona, it's the ego, the shadow, the anima and animus, and then the self. The persona is obviously what we portray to the world. The ego is what I want, what I need, what I desire, what I want in my life, what I... It's about having a center of who you are and what this consciousness, this bodily consciousness wants or needs or whatever it is. There's a there's something that you can call I with inside yourself. Then there's the shadow. The shadow is the parts of you that you basically don't want to acknowledge or look at. And there's a quite a few people that can look at the shadow within themselves. These are where like insecurities dwell. This is where past trauma dwells. This is where a lot of different kinds of just bad behavior patterns. And when I say bad behavior patterns, I don't necessarily mean bad behavior patterns. It's just unhealthy or negative emotions that are increasing in a pattern. That's where the shadow is. And a lot of times people can look a little bit at the shadow and they'll get developed, but to really get to the deep core of it, of to really the depths of that, you've got to go to the anima or the animus. Now, the anima is the totality of feminine experiences inside the male psyche. The animus is the totality of masculine experiences within inside the fem uh, female psyche. So there's an abundance of different kinds of experiences that people can have with depending on whether you're male or female in your psyche. And it's something that you relate to. That's kind of the key part about Jungian psychology. It's, it's the archetype is something that you relate to. It's an inner experience. It's like there's an observer watching the, like the archetypes play themselves out through you as the vessel. There's the thing that transforms through time. That's you. So then you have, and that's where the darkest parts of who you are are at is the anima or the animus because you're now having to relate to the function of feminine or masculine experiences that is not necessarily within your psychology. This is one of the reasons why I think the letter community is so confused is because they're not relating to their shadow or their anima or animus. They're not knowing how to relate to that internally. So they're trying to change the external to fit the desires of the internal because an and Jung believed that an anima or an animus could possess, so to speak, a person's personality. So basically what he's saying is that 
if if the anima or the animus is too strong and you cannot relate to it, it's going to take over you. It's going to completely take and and rob you of your of your being as a whole because it's just too much. And basically, if you don't know my interpretation to expand off of what Carl Jung is talking about, if we were to build something spiritually and psychologically and more philosophically with this, it's more along the lines of you have certain parts of your inner being that can be considered as demonic, provided they are a specific kind of energy, whether masculine or feminine. And if you allow the persistence of this demonic masculine or feminine energy to penetrate your subconscious so much so that you become unconscious of your consciousness. In fact, you become the NPC that you so do not want to become. That's when possession really happens. And that's essentially where the Jezebel, for example, I think the Jezebel could be considered as an archetype of the anima. But it's important to understand the anima can be a positive or negative influence. Sophia from the Bible is a good example of wisdom. And in the Bible, specifically in Proverbs, there's a lot of talk about how where wisdom is referred to as a woman. So it's important to understand that distinction. So then you have the self, which is the totality of all of those archetypes. And that includes, once again, the persona, the ego, shadow, anima or animus. And then the self is the totality of all of it within someone's psyche. So why is this important? Why is this important? Because the more that you understand about this kind of level of psychology and the depth of which you can understand yourself, the easier it's going to be to understand other people and how they work. And you have to realize that if you're speaking the truth, if you are disciplined, if you are competent, if you're training, like if you're a healthy individual physically, you're a healthy individual emotionally and spiritually, 75% of the population is not that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Remember, in the Bible, it also says that two thirds have eyes to see, do not have eyes to see and ears to hear. One third does. And that one third is God's people. Yeah, who is people. But it's more so along the lines of, okay, well, given if you want to look at the more deeper statistics of uh, attachment styles, 75% roughly speaking of the population has an unhealthy attachment style. Only 25% of the population has a healthy attachment style. So the unhealthy attachment style, styles are avoidant or they are uh, uh, anxious or they are anxious avoidant or fearful avoidant. Those are the kinds of attachment styles that uh, some people have I mean, most people have in our society. So a healthy attachment, excuse me, a healthy attachment is going to be something that is fairly uh, not normal. And so the best thing about coming into the truth, though, and abiding in the truth is that you'll be able to analyze people super, super simply and easily. I mean, it just takes about a five or ten minute conversation with somebody to really know where they're at and it takes probably about an hour or two hour conversation for somebody to see all your potential flaws but also your greatest strengths in conversation because you'll be able to see exactly if this person's operating out of an ideology or a dogma or if they're actually operating out of independent thought and emotion because if they're operating under authentic emotion and authentic being then they're going to have this organic quality about them all the time it's going to be there all the time so let your responsibility let your responsibility and your drive your ambition your discipline let all these things turn into their terror because it will <laughs> it will and you you can move accordingly you don't you don't owe anybody anything and nobody owes you anything in this life 
And that's going to be why I trade value for value. That's why I, I do that now. And so that's kind of just my boundary going forward with everybody is I, I have value to bring. I know I do. It's not about just me knowing my worth. It's like, no, I actually know I have something to offer. I know it because I wouldn't be the man that I am today without it. So we have to recognize that that uh, even though there's going to be a lot of naysayers, there's going to be a lot of depleted coomers for all the men. Like some of the men that are depleted coomers, man, they are the worst. Like they're worse than some of the women out here. They They act like women. Just insecure women, some of these men. It's, it's really ridiculous. But that's another sign of, you know, the anima or the animus taking over. All of these masculine women out here, all of these feminine men, what they're doing is they're allowing their anima or animus to take over because they can't form a proper relationship to it. They don't know how internally. They don't know how to re relate to that inner function. So with all that being said, I hope this message was useful and insightful. I do want to say that if anybody wants to join the Regal Change Academy, because we do have that Bible study weekly, we have a Regal Assembly weekly, which is basically just a group call where we talk about anything and everything. We've got about 145 people or so in the Regal Change Academy. That's the paid course and the paid community courses, really. We have multiple courses there. But uh, the Discord, though, is free for the Regal Change Academy. And there we have about 90 people or so. So if you want to join that, where we're helping people grow closer to Yahuwah, and we're helping people build their brand and business, their purpose, their relationships, and the fitness, that's going to be the place for you. Otherwise, you can join the Discord. And you won't get as many free resources and all that, but you'll still have a lot of resources and opportunities available. So... Also, I want to make sure that I give a shout out to everybody that's been moving from the YouTube platform over to the X and the Rumble platform. I appreciate your guys' support. I salute you. And with all that being said, peace be with you all. Till next time.